Hi guys, Tom Hunt here in the kit room and uh, I've had uh, a couple of questions asked on my, one on my Facebook page, one on my YouTube channel. They're both roughly around the same thing, asking about perch, how to locate them on canals. And one chap in particular, uh, he had a, um, uh, he's got a 10 year old son and he wants to know how they can find perch uh, and get the best out of, you know, trying to locate them. So I'm gonna give you a, f a few tips. So um, I've made a longer version of this as well, but it's about half an hour long. So I, I've just decided to, I'll put that one up as well, but I'll, I'll compress this into uh, some lures, some tips and some location things. Now, the first thing that I want to try and say to people is, um, is about lure size. The reason that you want to go to canals, especially if you're with youngsters, I keep a little setup in my car uh, that's got my little pouch, super lightweight, that will take everything I want, jig heads, lures, bit of fluorocarbon, got my mat, got some pliers, keep that in the car, a little net and a super light rod, and, and I keep that in the car and I sometimes steal half an hour down the local canal, an hour down the local canal. It's all about going light and getting bites, all right? But one thing that I see is, is some people thinking they're fishing small enough and they're not for the type of thing that we do on canals, all right? So typically we're fishing for ounce. You can get them up to three pound, but really a, most of your canal perch fishing is gonna be an ounce to about 10 ounce fish, all right? So for me, I tend to go very, very small. Smallest one here, inch and a half. We then go up to two inches, if you can see that one. Now, the next one up is a Stanley the Stickleback, Westin Stanley the Stickleback, and that is 5.5 centimeter, which is two and a quarter inches. But you can see how much bigger that's starting to get above the two inch one immediately. I then go up to a uh, six and a half centimeter uh, Westin uh, Shad um, uh, Westin Hypo Tees. This is, and you can start to see. And then once we're up to a seven and a half centimeter, uh, that's only three inches. But that compared to, you know, what I would put on, there is an enormous difference between you know inch and a half and three inches. Well, there's a big enough difference between two inches and three inches, if you can see that properly. So when we're talking about finesse fishing, make sure that you're actually small enough to start with, because I, you know, inch and a half and two inches is the perfect for getting plenty of bites. Once we're up to this size, I would class that as my canal pike fishing type lure. And I'm really only at three inches uh, because most of the pike in there are gonna be 12 ounces to about three pound. All right, so keep it small, keep it finesse, I'll typically go on to about an eight pound fluorocarbon. I know some guys out there will fish a three or a five. Five's the minimum that I fish if I'm really finessing, uh, but typically I don't go that light because there's so many of those small uh, uh, pike in there as well, I don't wanna get bitten off. So eight pound is normally about enough insurance for me. Now, in terms of where are you gonna find them? So most people will know this, that perch are absolutely structure addicts. So, you know, I think this was actually mentioned in the question to me. We tried all of the normal spots, but can you give us some tips on some other things? So yeah, always the first thing, locks, bridges, outflows, weed beds, overhanging trees any type of structure, any type of weeds. It's why perch have stripes on them because they want to be blending in with some sort of structure, some twigs, some rushes, some weeds, some over, because they're ambush predators, okay? They want to blend in with that background. They absolutely love feeding on all of those invertebrates as well that will be around locks, bridges, walls, structure, et cetera, et cetera. So they're always the best places to go. But I do have some top tips beyond that. Uh, it's, first one is based on water temperature. Second one's based on water clarity. Water temperature. Once it gets up a little bit warmer, so once you're into the spring in kind of May time, summer and autumn, water temperature is high. The perch will spread out away from their locks and their bridges, but they do tend to be, you'll find them in little packs. They'll hunt in little packs and they'll spread out. But what you want to do is, if the water is 
uh, deep enough on the inside, they will still be structure addicts. They will just go very, very tight to the tins. So I catch perch under my feet all the way in between, between a lock and another lock, for example, if you've got anywhere that you've got tins where boats can come in and it's designed so that, you know, you've got at least sort of two foot depth, those perch will be right underneath your feet. If there's plenty of colour, this is especially the case. So the Grand Union that I fish, there's not loads and loads of perch in there, but you virtually never catch one because the water clarity is only a few inches. There's tons of Xander in there. Uh, you virtually never catch a perch more than about 12 inches away from the inside bank because it's where you've got most depth. You've got tins virtually along the whole length of it and they love staying next to structure. It makes them feel safe and it gives them somewhere to patrol up and down and don't really actually even worry too much about fishing right on top of them. Uh, I generally start with my fluorocarbon leader about two foot long and I use that uh, where my braid comes onto my fluorocarbon. Uh, that is my knot that is an indicator of whether it's deep enough. So I set it at about two foot deep and if I can still see the knot but only just, I know I'm nearly two foot deep, that's great. If the knot is quite a far out of the water, six, eight, 12 inches out of the water and I know that I've only got 12 inches of, of water underneath my feet, I won't spend huge amounts of time there. But on those canals that have a lot of boat traffic, tend to be a lot more coloured, but you've got a bit of depth, they will be underneath your feet all the way along. So just walk along, jigging, casting up and down, but really just straight off the rod tip, and you'll find even those quality perch right underneath the rod tip. If the water's a little bit clearer, they will be down the shelf and they'll be in the middle, okay? But there's a slight difference. If the water's warm, I will tend to fish heavier jig heads and I will fan cast and normally just two, three, four casts in every peg until you find them. Because once you found one, stay in that area and sweat it out because there will be more. They normally go around in small packs, you know, so there will be one, two, 10, 15 small perch like this, often in little packs hunting, all right? So once you've had one uh, bite and one fish, stay in that area because you've got to find the rest of the shoal. When the water starts to get colder, they will bunch up more around those structures and they'll be less in the middle between the structures. All right, so I won't spend a lot of time perch fishing in between. I catch loads of pike, loads of pike in between uh, on those straights. But my perch fishing is done almost exclusively around the structure, around the locks, around the bridges, the outflows, etc. However, once that water starts to get cold, I will typically slow my lure down and I will switch from a jig across to a drop shot or I will fish a ned rig because you have to present the lure much, much slower. And to be honest, the small perch really don't feed in the numbers like they do in the autumn when it's kind of September time. A lot of them in Jan, Feb and March, the water's too cold. I don't think they can digest fry properly. So I think they switch their diet across to invertebrates. So consider micro creature baits uh, or a little um, a kind of a blood tease, maybe even cut in half on a drop shot uh, or, or anything that's very, very small that imitates natural uh, uh, baits because if you still want to catch the small ones, but really once you're in Jan, Feb and March, that's the time that the bigger ones are going to start to feed. So expect less bites, but bigger fish. So don't be afraid to fish a Ned Rig, which is three inches or 2.75 inches or a two and a half inch stand up slim swims from Z-Man's very good. And don't move them a huge amount. Spend quite a bit of time on each cast, dragging them around, leaving them dead sticking. And, and the reason it's so good, that buoyant material stand up off the bottom is so much easier for them to come down and eat rather than trying to pick up a bait that's laid flat on the bottom when they're not hugely hungry and they're not hugely interested. So a little bit of difference there between warm water and cold water. Uh, certainly pay attention to the specific size because as soon as you start getting down from here down, that's what I'd start classing as pike, even though some people might think this is a perch lure. This is certainly pike territory on canals for me. So keep it small, less than two and a half inches. Um, 
Summertime, little bit heavier jig head, three grams, two and a half grams, bang it about a bit more if there's color in the water right on the inside, but keep around structure. And when the water's clear, concentrate, drop shots, slower methods, either down the middle or certainly around that structure still. So hope that helps you. Some quick tips on perch fishing on canals. And uh, any questions or comments or any topics you want me to make a video, drop it in the comments below. Until then, I'll see you on the next one.